Hey again guys and welcome back. Today I want to take a look at these things. These are the cheapest lithium ion batteries I could possibly buy as a Canadian. These are protected cells from Banggood. You can tell they're protected because you see the little branding on the bottom there. It's because they actually have a circuit board under there uh, and there's a wire that runs up this way. As you can see the reflection there. So it's actually underneath this wrapper here. These specific ones, um, there's a link in the description if you want to get your own, but these specific ones have a problem. Now a lithium ion battery, typically don't want to bring them down below, you know, this one here, 2.75 volts, um, because they can be damaged on recharge. But these ones are protected, so when the battery goes low, this one's 3.8 volts, um, the protection kicks in and cuts off the cell completely. 3.79, 3.75, and 0. So this one here is in protection. I'm going to have to try to recover it out of protection before we go and experiment with these things. So let's see if we can get that done. So I had done some experimentation with this uh, TC4056 module in the past. Um, the only thing is this specific one here that I've hooked up to this 18650 battery box has protection on it. So I'm not quite sure if this is going to work, but I mean, it's worth a shot. So I'm going to plug in the charger doctor there so you can see the voltage and plug this guy in here. You should be able to see the current flowing to the battery, or to the cell, I should say. Also, these protected cells are quite a bit longer than a regular 18650, so I may not be able to squeeze it in there. Well, I did. may not be able to get it out after. So we'll see, and make sure I'm kind of on the screen here. It's okay, that battery bank has shut off. Okay, so 4 volts, 0.8 amps. Um, not sure if this is actually charging, but I think the goal is to uh, bring the voltage up on this thing and perhaps the, um, the, the battery will recover. Doesn't... Oh, there we go. We've got a couple milliamps. I'm not sure if this is actually working. 8 milliamps. Yeah, I'm not sure if this module is letting is letting this battery be charged because of the completely dead cell. Might have to do it manually. And I'm willing to do that, but I just want to see if this will work. No, it looks like that's a fail, so um, let's go on to other methods. Attempt number two, uh, brute force. So let's see, let's just confirm that this uh, cell did not recover in any significant way. Hopefully you can see that. Nothing. Still completely empty. So we're going to go the brute force method. So we're actually going to pop this into an empty cell holder. Oh my god, it's really stressing the plastic. These uh, these protected cells are quite a bit fat, fatter than uh, their non-protected counterpart. Right, one and two. We have the uh, power supply here set to 200 milliamps and 4.2 volts, which is the maximum voltage allowable on the cell. And we'll be able to see the current flow if there's any. So like so, and let's go. Oh, so it is flowing current. Look at that, 3.7, and we got 200 milliamps. So we're gonna let that go just a, a couple of minutes here, just to see if we gain any sort of voltage on the cell. We're at uh, 3.7. 2 volts. I'm not sure at what point this thing recovers. 
It's going to be interesting, nevertheless. 3.5. What happens if I turn this off? How much voltage do we have now? Is our cell alive? It is not. Nothing. Okay, well, we're going to have to juice it some more. There is 200 milliamps going into there. If I switch to the current, yeah, we've got 200 milliamps. So I'm going to leave this a couple minutes. Uh, hopefully, there's no fire. But I do have a containment dish pretty close. It's only actually been like 20 seconds since I shut off the camera. And this battery is now, ha now has a voltage, but it seems to be self-discharging quite rapidly. So we should charge this thing up to its max and see what happens, I guess. So uh, how am I going to do that? Well, I have a few options. I can use a, uh, a TP board. Um, or I can just use my hobby charger and I think I'm going to go my hobby charger because it has statistics that we can look at. So this here is my hobby charger. You can, uh, this multi-chemistry charger. Uh, I love this thing. It's actually really great. If you guys want a separate video on this, let me know in the comments below. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a lithium battery because that's what this is. Um, a balance charge. Sure, we can do a balance charge. It doesn't matter because it's only a single cell. So, um, yep, let's start this. Um, we'll go pretty low at uh, 100 milliamps. Uh, and I should be able to change what kind of cell it is. Or maybe I just press and hold. Balance port not connect. Okay, yeah, it doesn't want to let me do it. That's fine. So I'll just charge it here. Um, 100 milliamps drop it to a single cell, press and hold start, uh, low voltage, do checking, confirm, okay there we go, so uh, this will let me know how much, how many milliamp hours did it put in until it went full, it might take a little bit at uh, 10 milliamps, but um, or 100 milliamps I should say, but uh, yeah this is going to be quite interesting. I think if I press, oh no, yeah, I can't see the voltage is true. The voltage is here. Usually if you press uh, enter, you'll actually see all the cell voltages, but since it's a single cell, it is there. This is a super precise charger. Um, you can actually connect this to a laptop and have get a graph out of it, but um, I think for this purposes, I'll just uh, see how much our um, milliamp hour rating is down here. So I'll bring you back when that's done. So literally the next day and um, yeah, uh, these cells are garbage. So here's the uh, total, but it's not the grand total. So it was uh, 1,172 uh, milliamp hours that were put, put back into the cell. Don't forget these cells are, uh, you know, they're labeled. 4,000, but I mean, nobody believed 4,000, but I was hoping it was, you know, somewhere around 2,000. Um, there's an additional 150 milliamp hours that you have to add to that because charging at 100 milliamps um, after an hour, it put 100 milliamp hours into it. I tried to charge it at uh, 500 milliamps and it, it put in 50 milliamps and just said it was full. So basically, this thing must be trickle charged. To fill up. There's too much internal resistance so the voltage climbs up way too fast and it won't accept the charge. So you're stuck charging these things for you know 13 hours at a time at around 100 milliamps and this one here even at a very slow rate to keep the cell cool and the internal resistance from bogging it down it stayed really low. So yeah the only thing left to do now is to try one of the cells that weren't fully discharged on arrival. I'm going to do a cycle to discharge it and charge it to full. And this thing has this capability. Then I'll report back with one of the healthier cells and see if it's any 
Better. Bring you back then. The plot thickens. So this is the one here that arrived dead. Uh, I tested another one and I got, you know, one of the healthy ones and I got 878 milliamp hours with the same discharge and charge rate of 100 milliamps. Now, if I, because I had some weird results, I checked the other cells. I got 962 milliamp hours and 11, uh, 17 milliamp hours. So, yeah, these cells are trash. Um, I got some heat shrink for some cells, so I'm going to take the shittiest one and tear it down because, uh, yeah, maybe the cell has some labeling that'll help us figure out what the heck is going on here. I'm going to try my best not to chop into the cell itself or the uh, wiring for the cell, but honestly, I, I don't care. These things are garbage. I've contacted Banggood. Um, because these are not sent in for review. These were paid for with my own money. So they have the, you know, same, they, they treat me like a customer in that case. And they said they needed a video of the problem next to the packaging of these cells. And, and then they'll consider giving me a refund or um, offer me a solution. And so the packaging is long gone. So they basically told me to stuff it. And so, yeah, I wouldn't recommend buying these cells at all. So here we go. This is the protection circuitry here. That's a little strip I was telling you guys about. And this is just a sticker. So yeah, these are unlabeled Chinesium cells. Nothing much to them. Come on off. So basically, um, the negative terminal will come down to here. Um, the positive will come from this circuit board up to this button here. And this makes it a little bit longer and a little bit harder to fit into battery boxes. Come on. Get out of there. There's a strip there for the negative. There's the circuit board here. I don't know if you can see it. But um, yeah, basically... There's a, yeah, there's a protection chip and there's a MOSFET package. Don't know if you can see that. Maybe if I brought it in a little closer. Okay, there's the little uh, protection chip right there. A little bit of passive supports and right down there, that is the power MOSFET. So you do need the thickness of this board here and the thickness of the components on it in order to you know, have protection, and that's why this thing is a little bit longer and a little bit wider than a typical cell. But yeah, I would really not recommend buying these things. If you can, salvage cells. I'm sure used cells would actually have more capacity and more usefulness than these things. So yeah, do not recommend 0 out of 10 IGN. Thanks for watching.